Hello and welcome to session 9 of our lecture on quality control and improvement using Minitab. So, I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh Jameka School of Management. So, uh, last time what we were discussing about control charts uh, which is used to differentiate between normal and abnormal scenarios with respect to time. Uh, so, what we are discussing uh, last time uh, we will start from there and uh, this was the basic uh, details that we are discussing over here. If it is a, a normal distribution, so in that case what is expected that uh, 99.73 of the observation full should fall within uh, plus or minus 3 standard deviation. Uh, so, uh, if we can draw a uh, 2 demarcation line one is known as uh, upper control limit line over here uh, which is also in short form you can write as UCL and lower control limit line as LCL. So, uh, if we can define this line with a central line over here which is known as CL over here and uh, and that will help us to differentiate between normal and abnormal scenarios. So, this is a normal scenario, this is a abnormal scenario what we discussed last time ok. Abnormal scenario means assignable cause due to certain assignable cause or cause that is uh, that leads to uh, a abrupt change in the process mean over here because central line is basically mean over here. So, overall process uh, and this is the mean over here what you see over here. So, suddenly there is some uh, something has gone wrong and the average has come out which is this observation over here this will be some average uh, which is plotted at every time point and uh, at different time points we are taking uh, information that also we discussed last time and uh, and we are plotting average because average uh, tends to be much smoother and uh, it follows normal distribution from the central limit theorem which we uh, which we have told last time ok. So, um, if we can and this is the CTQ we are monitoring the CTQ basically this x bar is for a specific CTQ let us assume ok. So, uh, if we can define the upper limit line and lower limit line and a central line. So, in that case it becomes easier for us to understand when the process has gone out of control ok. So, this is if, if the process uh, if, if something goes outside the limit line we say process has gone out of control basically ok. So, then what we do is that we stop the process and take some precautionary actions and so that this does not recur this type of incidents. And uh, if it is a mass manufacturing we may not be able to stop, but later on we can diagnose and see that which is which is the assignable cause which uh, which we can block uh, in next operation or next shift may be it will not recur like that. So, it, it, it uses a signal kind of uh, signal alarm kind of scenarios and uh, it is a proactive actions that we generally try to take. So, that it does not recur basically ok. So, uh, this is the uh, concept of control chart. So, we plot with respect to time at different time points what we will do is that we will monitor the average values over here and for that we will define a limit lines over here based on uh, process average uh, overall process average and based on the information of standard deviation of the process or range of the process may be we will, we will try to differentiate. Uh, uh, where to use which one over here. So, uh, mostly people prefer to use R or S like that for expressing the variability and so uh, those things uh, we will discuss uh, how to implement that in Minitab. So, assuming that one CTQ we are monitoring and we want to uh, use control chart for that and try to figure out when there is a uh, abnormal scenario when there is a normal scenario like that ok. So, uh, there are different types of control charts suggested by researchers like that ok. So, one is known as variable control chart what you see on the left hand side and one is known as attribute control chart over here. Variable control chart like thickness what we have mentioned. So, uh, that can be considered as uh, variable for that CTQ we can we can use variable control chart uh, because uh, variable control chart where we are interested in location and also in precision both the things are important for me because uh, variables can be measured and in that case continuous variable mostly and in that case or ratio scale variables we can think of. So, uh, um, that is uh, what we can uh, we can monitor and uh, for that mean accuracy and precision both is important. So, in that case uh, both can be measured and can be monitored like that and attribute like uh, defects what you see uh, over here and defectives. So, difference between defects and defectives we need to understand when to use defect control chart when to use defective control chart. So, in a product what happens is that uh, uh, there can be innumerable problems or defect types like that some can be rectified some may not be rectified like that ok. So, uh, when we can rectify all then we have a rework we have reworked all the defects and we, we have a good products like that ok. 
ok. But sometimes what happens is that one of the defects has gone beyond my control. So, if there is a board dimensions which has to be uh, within certain specification over here and uh, I have manufactured something which is having a dimension more than that one that means I have basically the board dimension has increased over here due to processing or some other mistakes like that. But this cannot be rectified you see this kind of uh, defects cannot be rectified. So, that means this bore is of no use for the uh, for the next operations like that ok. So, this goes as a scrap basically this goes as a scrap over here. So, that when it, whenever it goes as a scrap and we cannot do anything uh, about that. So, then uh, we define that as a defective items like that then we define that as a defective item over here. So, whenever uh, so uh, to create uh, so, so to express a defective items we we need at least one defects which cannot be rectified basically ok. So, uh, attribute control chart talks about defects and defectives. This is a primary uh, control chart which is implemented in processes like assembly processes or any other manufacturing processes. First, our identification whether defects are going abnormal, defectives are going abnormal and then if it is so then can we link it with some CTQs and monitor that one. So, uh, it has to be converted because defects has no meaning defects because of what some CTQs like that. So, we have to convert the defects into some CTQ and monitor the CTQ so that we take more proactive actions on the CTQs like that when that is going out of controls uh, like that so, because that will create uh, defects that will create defects. So, uh, this is a primary level of data analysis what we do uh, by control charting, but if you want to go uh, depth in depth like that then we go for variable control charts like that because defects are linked with some CTQs like that ok. So, uh, if you can link defects with CTQs multiple CTQs can be and individual CTQs can be monitored or together also there are control charts to be monitored which is known as multivariate control chart ok. So, uh, so, the basic difference between defects and defective is that defectives cannot be rectified, defects can be rectified, but minimum one defect is required to define a defective items like that. So, uh, there are different types of control chart to monitor that one. Now, in variable control chart we have to understand that at a given time point t how many observations we are taking over here, how many observations we can take for calculating the average of the process like that average of the process. So, we may uh, manufacture let us say uh, baby foods and in that case four uh, we, we can take let us say 50 packets are coming out of the process uh, at a given time point and uh, we will take only 4 out of that. So, that 4 number which which we are taking at a given time point to calculate average weights of the packets like that. So, in that case uh, that is known as uh, subgroup size that is known as subgroup size in, in quality control subgroup uh, size subgroup size ok. So, uh, this subgroup size uh, is an important aspect. So, we need to ensure some subgroup size over here based on the uh, uh, process uh, details. So, we have to define the subgroup size. So, generally subgroup size is taken as uh, 5 or more like that 4 to 5 or more than that also can be taken uh, depending on how much we can we can uh, if it is destructive kind of testing in that case it becomes difficult to uh, take more samples like that, but 4 or 5 is uh, sufficient enough to draw the primary control chart like uh, what is known as x bar r chart or x bar s chart. So, whenever the sample size some some guideline is given this is not absolute guideline what we are using over here. So, maybe if the sample size is more than 5 we can uh, we can go for x bar and standard deviation s chart. So, this is known as x bar and s chart and this is known as x bar r chart. So, if it is less than uh, or equals to 5 maybe we can restrict to x bar r chart like that. So, if it is a variable and more than one subgroup size is there. So, n is greater than 1 what is written over here n is known as the subgroup size and if n equals to 1 sometimes in chemical process what happens is that we do not need more than one samples because the variation will be very less sample to sample at a given time point maybe viscosity or something like that we are talking over here. In that case there is little variation even if I take more than one samples readings will be more or less same. So, in that case it is unnecessary to take more number of samples like that. So, if that is the scenario what we do is that uh, we plot individual moving range like that we can write IMR type of chart which can be written as IMR over here or uh, if it is more than one samples can be gathered and we know that there will be sample to sample variation. So, in that case uh, whether we have uh, we can take uh, about 5 samples like that if it is within 5 samples what we will do is that we will use x bar r chart like that and in case it is more than 5 also we can we can uh, uh, 
we can afford. So, in that case more appropriate chart will be x bar s chart like that. So, we will go uh, variable control chart we will do first and then we will see attribute control chart how to do it in minute app like that ok. So, uh, variable control chart within that also we are restricting over here to uh, for larger shift the control chart that I used to detect large shifts and in that case what she what has recommended one is x bar r chart x bar s chart and if it is n equals to 1 then how to use uh, individual moving range chart which is known as IMR chart like that. That we will discuss first then we will go to attribute chart. Within attribute charts also there are uh, bifurcations over here what you can see is that if it is uh, defective chart uh, we have uh, constant sample size the number of samples that is subgroups uh, that is taken in uh, whether it is constant or whether it is varying like that. So, in case uh, it is constant in that case uh, we can use p or np charts like that we can also use np charts over here or p charts. Uh, p and np charts is more or less same only for the operators benefit of the operators what we do is that we can multiply it with n and that gives the operator some sense that defectives uh, if we write 0 0.00 something defectives like that we will see how calculation is done. So, np chart is only to facilitate the operator uh, uh, to monitor like that they understands uh, 2 number of defects, 3 number of defects, 2.5 defects that that is understood. But if we if we write defects in decimal place or something like the defectives in decimal place that is not well understood by the operator. So, in that case what happens is that uh, somebody prefers to use np chart instead of p charts like that ok. But there is also a possibility that we can vary the sample size when n is not constant at any given time point. So, n keeps on changing with respect to time like that. So, uh, if we keep on changing the n in that case we have a variable control chart p chart uh, with variable sample sizes like that that we will also demonstrate in that if that is the scenario how the control chart uh, needs to be used and how it is monitored like that ok. Similarly, uh, in case of defective. So, defective is like uh, how many assemblies uh, you are monitoring the assembly operations like that and uh, 20 engines are manufactured and in that case you take some sample uh, uh, and uh, or 100, 100 uh, 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 engines are manufactured out of that you are taking let us say 5, 5 of them and you are checking that whether it is uh, whether it is defective or no defect a 0 1 condition basically whether it is working or not working like that that is the condition ok. Defective is 0 1 condition. So, either it is working or not working type of scenario here we can have 1 defects 2 defects like this there can be n number of defects like that. But whenever I am saying defectives this is 0 1 and the primary distribution that it follows we are assuming is binomial. So, this is uh, binomial uh, distribution that underlying distribution is binomial for this and this is a Poisson distribution which is considered over here when we are talking about defects like that ok. So, uh, this way so defects when we are talking about defects the control limit lines will be calculated and that will be based on binomial distribution and uh, and for that different types of control chart n and p will be demonstrated and for if it is defect types also n can vary over here. So, if uh, n is constant in that case we have a c type of control chart and in case we have a uh, uh, we have uh, varied uh, n over here. So, at a given time point there are uh, number of samples that was inspected is different and number of defects is monitored. In that case we can use uh, u chart. So, in software industry we will find that uh, people are talking about uh, lines of code. So, within that lines of codes how many defects uh, uh, there is uh, or error that has happened basically. So, that can be monitored because lines of codes are different at given different time points like that in a project uh, it can vary. So, if it varies in that case u is taken as uh, so, this can be calculated at uh, defects by a uh, number of observations. So, n i over here and these are the c i number of defects at a given time point t let us say and uh, if you take the ratio of this you will get uh, u conditions over here and uh, this is the u variable over here and this u, u will be plotted like that in the control chart instead of uh, c charts over here ok. So, uh, our basic assumption is that quality characteristics can be of different types, but uh, if we can go to the highest level of precision then we have a variable control chart for that and if you are going for uh, defects or defective attribute types of scenarios uh, which is uh, quality of data is not so uh, high as compared to when we are going to variable control charts like that. So, uh, here only defects and defective that level of differentiation is only possible. So, lowest level is defectives we can assume the data data quality is lowest level is defective then defects may be and then variable control chart which is the highest level data we what we can gather and based on that we take a decision like that ok. So, uh, assuming that CTQ thickness we can measure and in that case how to implement uh, control chart that we will try to see ok. 
So, uh, what do you do in statistical process control basically what we do we, we take some sample at a given time point that I told already that at any given time point t we will go to the process and we will try to take uh, number of samples n equals to 4, 5 or something like that more than 5 also. So, we take a sample then inspect the samples and calculate the average of the samples may be and range of the samples may be uh, of the 5, 4 or 5 samples that I have taken and then uh, we have a control chart first we create try to create the control chart and if it is already created then we just plot the uh, values of what we have uh, taken over here. So, control chart will have some limit lines uh, upper limit lower limit that we have discussed earlier earlier and uh, then we see whether there is uh, abnormal or normal condition like that is it any abnormal condition is there. Uh, and in that case if it is yes stop the process like that. So, uh, this will be assignable this uh, as misprint this one. So, assignable cause. So, in case uh, abnormal conditions are not there we will not stop the process and if, if uh, assignable cause is there or point is going outside the uh, limit lines that is defined uh, LCL like that. So, in that case what will happen is that we will say that some assignable cause is there and we will try to eliminate that cause. So, we will have a fish point diagram for this. So, this is the uh, process CTQ which is going wrong over here and this is the cause which is basically primarily influencing and for that we are getting assignable cause. How to deal with that so that it does not recur. So, this may be assignable cause 1. So, uh, and that way we have to we have to think like that ok. So, uh, so, this is the overall process. So, we try to monitor whenever product is coming out of that we do not inspect everything out of that. So, we will take some 5 samples out of that and then find out the what is the average value of uh, whatever characteristics we are monitoring over here and then plot it into control chart which is already created let us say and then figure out whether it is in control or out of control scenarios. So, if it is in control everything is fine we do not have to change the settings or adjustment is not required. In case something is plotting outside figure out what is going wrong over here or adjust the process like that. Either I will block the cause or in presence of cause I will change the setting so that uh, our again the process uh, uh, target values are satisfied. So, x bar is close to the target. So, that way we have to think uh, using the control chart. So, this is a signal alarm based type of approach that is used uh, and proactive approach that we can use over here. So, uh, and uh, this control limit lines will be calculated that we will show in next uh, uh, subsequent slides like that. Okay. So, variable control chart, variable control chart monitors two things. One it monitors mean and also it monitors precision. So, one is accuracy it monitors, one is precision it monitors. Accuracy means uh, how, how the mean is moving. So, mean value is important because that has to be monitored with respect to target and here what we are monitoring is standard deviation or range over here. Uh, so, which talks about uh, variability sigma that means how much variation in the process. So, uh, maybe S type of control chart can be used or range type of control chart or R chart can be used over here. So, combination of this X bar chart with R or X bar chart with S is uh, generally used to monitor the uh, variable type of CTQs, variable type of CTQs. Whenever, whenever I have a CTQ which is variable type in that case I will use this X bar R chart to monitor that one or X bar S chart over here. General recommendation is if S, the S bar is less than equals to 5 we can use this one and if uh, in case N is greater than 5, uh, greater than 5 and in that case we can use X bar S chart. More or less the uh, uh, concept or uh, the formulation over here is more or less uh, uh, same. So, in that case we do not have to uh, uh, some some variable some constant will be changed otherwise the process remains same process remains same ok. So, uh, then uh, what we will do is that uh, we will try to see. So, wh what we do is that uh, we try to first uh, decide on the subgroup size that is n. So, what we do is that uh, we decide on the subgroup size n over here and uh, based on the subgroup size n. Uh, then what we do is that we uh, we record the observation what is the x bar and what is the range for at a given time point t let, let us say at a given time point t and uh, uh, with the all information. So, here also we, we calculate x bar and r like that. So, here record observation may be I have 5 observation over here y 1 to y 5 like that and uh, then after recording the observation I calculate the mean of the observation and range of the observation at a given time point t at a given time point t. 
ok. So, then uh, we calculate, uh, so this is the same thing what we are seeing over here. So, uh, more or less then we calculate the average and range and that will be plotted basically, that will be plotted like that, ok. So, what we can see out of this is that whenever the mean, let us say this is the uh, mean over here and mean can shift over here, mean can uh, shift that means location can shift over here and mean may be same and then standard deviation may change over here. So, sigma 0 is the standard deviation, variation can also change like that. So, both will impact the control chart. Whenever Whenever there is a uh, variation problem, it will be indicated. Whenever is a uh, we have uh, uh, mean shifting problem, there also we will have uh, situation like that. So that is also uh, we will uh, come across when we are using the control chart like that. Okay. So uh, so here we will take a specific example to illustrate this one, and this is taken from Montgomery's example, Statistical Quality Control Book. And in this case, uh, it is it is saying that heartbreak process is used in conjugation with the uh, photolithography in semiconductor manufacturing, and uh, we want to establish control chart, statistical control, and try to see. And for that, some data was gathered like that and uh, flow width is the parameter which was monitored over here. So, this is, this is the CTQ which was monitored uh, and uh, and we want to use x bar r chart for this process like that. So, you will see at a given time point T1 let us say first sample observation was taken and uh, and uh, given number of subgroups over here n equals to 5. So, n equals to 5 this observation. So, 5 observation was measured at a given time point T1 over here. Okay. And at this uh, at this instance what we can do is that we can calculate uh, the average over here which is x over here. So, what is the average of this? So, all this uh, 5 observation that we can calculate average and we can also calculate range maximum minus minimum maximum of this observation and minus minimum of this observation. So, this can be easily done when we are uh, using excels like that ok. So, uh, let me uh, take this example and show you to uh, excel what, what it does. So, then we have uh, uh, 25 number of averages we will get, uh, we will get 25 average over here and uh, we will have 25 ranges over here. So, then what we can do is that x double bar uh, can be uh, the average of all x bar over here and divided by 25. So, this will give me a uh, overall average or grand average over here. Also range average we can calculate. So, we can calculate uh, r uh, whatever uh, r values we can also calculate range average. So, we will have 25 uh, range and average of that range can also be calculated like that ok. And then uh, we will use the control chart to monitor this one. So, let us go to the uh, what we will do is that we, we will see that this data is already available with us and we will just demonstrate that one ok. Uh, so, flow width uh, x bar r chart. So, this is the data set that we are having what I mentioned is that uh, with at different time points what what is done is that uh, this is the data set the same data set that we have shown from the examples over here 25 data sets and then x bar was calculated which can be calculated as we can we can just write x bar is the average observation of this. So, we can write what average so I can highlight this one uh, 5 averages over here. And then range can also be calculated as maximum what you can see on the top maximum minus minimum of this observation. So, uh, maximum of this observation. So, uh, B 3 to F 3. So, this is B B 3 to F 3 and uh, minus minimum of this. So, range can also be calculated for a specific row over here. So, similarly we can calculate all uh, average and all range and grand average can also be calculated which is the average of all this observation that you see over here. Okay. Similarly, range average can also be calculated. So, these two values are required uh, to develop the control chart limit lines like that. So, x double bar is 1.51 over here and r bar is 0.33 over here. So, this will help me. Uh, so, I have 25 observations with subgroup size of 5 over here and then I can calculate individual values. So, these are the individual x bar r values. This will be plotted in the uh, control chart and uh, I have a grand average and uh, average of the range and which will help me to to define the control limit lines that is which is normal which will differentiate between what is normal and what is abnormal basically ok. So, uh, this will be required uh, when we. So, uh, let us take this data set into uh, a mini tab. So, we will just see and it is already there in the mini tab. So, this is the observation wafer 1 to wafer 5 I think. So, this is the same observation wafer 1 to 5. So, 1.3235 and this is 1.3235. So, that you can see over here ok. So, uh, 
and this is the new sheet which is named over here x bar s chart. So, you can also create from excel and you can just type in the sample observation over here. So, whenever you have typed in the data then uh, we can we can create the control charts and uh, and what is the formula that is used to create the control chart over here. So, what you see uh, formulation over here is that uh, there is a, a mini tab we will use a calculation method to get the upper control limit line over here and this is x double bar 1.5 0 and this is same as what we have calculated 1 point grand average what you what we have calculated over here. So, maybe we can just cross check in excel. So, grand average is 1.51 and range average is 0.33. So, in this case also you will find that uh, the minute app calculates 1.5056 and that is close and also range is 0 0.3233 3 3 or uh, that is also close. So, minute app does the same calculation. So, from the same data set. So, what we have done in excel. So, x double bar and r bar is calculated in same way. Only we have to understand how this ucl and lcl is calculated over here and ucl has a specific formula. So, ucl formulation over here you see this is x double bar information. So, that is the grand average is taken over here and there is this is multiplied plus uh, sign is over here and this is a uh, constant factor that is multiplied with the r bar or r average uh, range average what we have calculated already over here which is given over here. So, this is used in the formulation to calculate UCL and this is also used to calculate uh, LCL over here. So, one is plus a factor uh, and this can be written as this is the uh, I can replace this one with a 2. So, I can write this as a 2 and this is also a 2 like that. So, formulation changes like this x double bar plus or minus. Uh, a 2 r bar like that. So, we can just write that one replacing this one ok. So, uh, what is this a 2 over here? There is a constant which you see as d 2 over here observation d 2 and there is a n is the subgroup size like that n equals to 5 for our case over here. This example flow width because 5 observation was taken over here. So, n equals to 5 and this d 2 is a uh, basically function of. So, d 2 is a function of n over here. So, so, depending on the subgroup size this d 2 value will change like that ok. 3 is a constant. So, the 3 does not change over here, but this 2 has a relationship with n and d 2 are related with n. So, this constant will change ok. So, this is for x bar chart over here this is for x bar chart. So, the I will get a upper control limit line using this formula that is given over here. I will get a lower control limit line using the formula over here because every information is with me n is with me d 2 value is with me which is uh, we can get from table and then r bar is there x double bar is there. So, I have defined ucl uh, as 1.69 and lcl comes out to be 1.31. Similarly, for range chart over here uh, and central line will be x double bar in this case. So, this is x double bar what you see. Similarly, range average will be uh, what we have calculated will be the central line and the upper control limit line uh, is calculated based on certain formulas uh, that is d 4 r bar and uh, lower control limit line is d 3 r bar like that. Now, d 3 and d 4 is again a constant which depends on what subgroup size I have taken over here which is equals to 5. So, this will define the uh, d 3 d 4 value which is a function of basically n subgroup size like that. So, uh, that formulation is also we can we can see. So, this is central line will be r bar over here and one side upper control limit line with the d 4 r bar and d 3 r bar. So, this is monitoring sample range what you see and this is monitoring mean over here. So, one is monitoring accuracy one is monitoring precision over here. So, and this is uh, now this calculation can be done by hand also because all the charts are available and this is the this is the chart where you will get the values of d 2 for a given n over here. So, the n is the subgroup size and for a given value of n equals to 5 and I can get what is the value of d 2. I can also get value of a 2 and I can get what is the value of d 3 and she has recommended this value. So, what is the value of d 4? So, using this values to corresponding n uh, changing n over here. I will go to that particular specific row and I can get all the values. So, I want a 2 values, I want d 3 and d 4 values. So, that will define the control limits for x uh, accuracy and also to monitor precision like that. So, a mini tab does it automatically for you. So, in that case uh, it is easy for you to uh, get that. So, uh, how, how does mini tab does it? So, this data set is taken into mini tab and this is very easy. So, when we have the data in mini tab, so this is the same data set and what you do is that stat control chart, variable chart, x bar, r chart, this is the option that you have to go, 
uh, because I, I am monitoring 5 less than equals to 5. So, I am using x bar r chart over here. So, I will use x bar r chart then it will ask is it in same column. Then I mention no it is in different columns like that. So, in that case I will mention that wafer 1 to wafer 5 is the data set you take and I select this one and uh, x bar any point going outside the limit line we will and this is by default which is given over here as test. So, any point going outside so I have clicked only one options over here we will discuss about this in next sessions. So, uh, this is uh, if it is going beyond 3 sigma limit we will take uh, corrective action. So, that will be as will be an assignable cause. So, I have taken one single condition that if point goes outside the 3 sigma limit line this is abnormal scenario. So, you you monitor that one only. So, I click ok over here and I click ok what you will see is that you have this control chart like that ok. So, whenever you do that so x bar r control chart the same uh, information. So, you see all the points in mean is falling within the control limit line. So, x double bar is same r bar I have the control limit line upper and lower control limit line. Lower control limit line is 0 because d 3 is 0. So, in that case um, this is a 0 line or range can be equals to 0 it cannot be negative, but it can be 0. So, there is no variation. So, that is the lower control limit line. So, uh, and this is the upper control limit line. So, uh, all the points are within the control limit lines. So, in this case uh, there is no red red points that is going outside this limit I what you see. So, everything is going fine over here. So, there is no out of control or abnormal scenarios over here. So, we will stop over here and we will continue for discussion on this topic from here. Again we will take some more examples to illustrate and how it is happening. So, abnormal scenarios also we will try to see. So, let us stop over here and uh, we will continue in the next session. Thank you for listening. Okay, see you in next session. Yeah.